Good morning, good afternoon, welcome everybody. Thrilled to have everybody in attendance today. You joined us for a 2017 predictions hosted by Techmark. I'm Gary Stotko, and I'm here with Christy Graham. Christy's an account executive for Techmark. She is a wealth of knowledge and has been uh, an outstanding uh, addition with me to keep our business going. I'm the director of business development. Been doing the uh, hospitality technology for a number of years, more than I'd like to mention. And our guest today is Mr. Ryan Williams from Custom Business Solutions. Oh, sorry about that. I skipped the slide. Forgive me. Let me tell you briefly about Techmark. We were founded in 1979. Our expertise and specialty is retail and hospitality cybersecurity. We do managed Wi-Fi, managed PCI, firewall protection, security professional services, IT engineering services, and app development. So we're everything tied to a software, either protecting it or testing it before it goes to the market. And now, our guest play something is going to be a really good year, and uh, yeah, I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay, let's jump in. Uh, I am uh, I'm the I'm the client success manager, marketing manager, kind of a sales marketing hybrid role at Custom Business Solutions. Uh, and for those of us uh, on the webinar right now, you probably have heard my voice and Gary's voice before. This is actually not our first time doing webinars together. Uh, we did. Um, a few years ago, what what was then the Restaurant Technology Guys webinar series. Um, that has since turned into the Restaurant Technology Guys podcast, and I'm actually uh, the host of the Restaurant Technology Guys podcast. So the wealth of knowledge that you guys are about to um, uh, absorb today is, is what we talk about all the time on the Restaurant Technology Guys podcast. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity opportunity to invite Gary uh, and Christy and Techmark uh, to the Restaurant Technology Guys podcast. I think it would be great. We could even turn this topic into a podcast. But if you guys want to go check that out, go to restauranttechnologyguys.com and you can access our podcast from there. Sorry, no, that's okay. sales. I want to do a and, and I want to do a quick housekeeping there, Ryan. Folks, down in the bottom right hand corner, you can ask questions at any time shoot them across and we'll try to slide them in as we're going through the presentation or we'll just save it towards the end for the Q&A. And then back to the restaurant technology guys, I want to say real quickly and thank you to all the folks that have joined us again. I know we went offline for a while but we do have um, a lot of faithful listeners and followers that have joined us again today. We've got uh, you know a ton of people that have jumped in. So. Folks, one last plug for the podcast. It's getting thousands of downloads right now, and um, they will be speaking in areas across the country. Our objective has always been to educate our audience into the right decision because there's so much going on. We've got so much being thrown at us on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis that you need somebody, somebody to behave as your consumer report. And that's what we try to do. So let's let's get going. Yep. Uh, real quick, Gary, before we jump into that, I did want to take an opportunity. Uh, so I am here today. I'm representing Custom Business Solutions. That is the uh, the foundation of the Restaurant Technology Guys. Um, and essentially, guys, Custom Business Solutions. Uh, we've been around for quite a while. Um, we were founded in 1993, but the wealth of knowledge that exists within Custom Business Solutions extends way beyond those. Uh, you know, 20, 30 years. Um, we have focused on hospitality and restaurant technology, specifically in the point of sale world. We began in cash registers, moved over to the traditional point of sale, and now we've written our own cloud-based point of sale system called North Star Order Entry, being used in some um, some of the brands that you enjoy every single day, melting pot. Um, Carinos. Carinos, Norwegian Cruise Line. Um, what makes this a little bit unique, we're strictly restaurant hospitality. We don't dabble in retail. We let our friends over at Techmark uh, kind of tell us what's what in retail. We stick specifically with uh, the restaurant space so we, so we can really meet the needs of that specific niche. 
Uh, and, and ultimately, guys, our, uh, our number one target, our number one, uh, who we partner best with are those multi-units. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it back to Gary. Gary, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I, I'll, I'll throw in, before we jump into the agenda, I'll, I'll throw in one more plus for custom business solutions. You saw one of the bullets that pointed out traditional and tablet point of sale. That level of expertise to understand the transition from mechanical technology to computerized technology to cloud technology. There's not too many organizations that you guys can find that kind of expertise. So jumping into the agenda, we've already introduced the, the host, Christy and I, and I apologize. Christy, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And so Christy and I uh, are hosting Ryan here. We'll do a brief 2016 recap here and then do our five 2017 predictions. And then finally, open it up for questions. We know that your time is valuable. We try to keep the presentations at 25 to 30 minutes and allow for 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. So let's jump right in and go. 2016, Whew. go right to the next slide because it's going to, 2016, we learned nobody's immune. The, the freshest example is the most recent election. I, I, I don't even want to belabor this. It just shows us that in this day and age, when the bad guy's got intent, he's got the resources, financially and otherwise, to disrupt American business and other businesses. So, Christy, anything to add to that? Absolutely. I think it doesn't matter what your size is. The breaches last year were, if they were small organizations or big, they were just phenomenal. And we're going to see more coming going forward. And Social media is going to be another, you know, way for the criminals to get in. Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah, you know, I I'm just going to echo everything that they just said. But you know, you're look you look at some of the logos on this page right now: Homeland Security, the IRS, the FBI, even even companies that were born in the technology space, LinkedIn, people that people that you would hope you know would have all their ducks in a row, like Wendy's, um, they just, you know, everyone is susceptible. No one is immune from it. Uh, even, even Bloomberg Business came out to say that 2016 was a record year for breaches. Uh, and I know I don't anticipate that changing a whole heck of a lot just with the amount of information that is, that is being put out there into the world today. Um, so <clears throat> setting the stage for the rest of uh, 2017 um, was 2016 and breaches, uh, and, and we're going to chat about a few more trends that happened in 2016 that led us to um, come up with the list of what 2017 is going to hold for us. So, Gary? Cool. One of the sure things that we found out in 2016 also was that labor costs are going up. You've got parts of the country that are debating or already have enacted a $15 an hour wage rate within hospitality. You've got, um, in the most recent elections, both sides committing to a rate, labor rate. Uh, so one of the things we learned in 16 was labor rates are going up. Labor costs are going up. That was made certain. Christy, you want to add anything to that? No, I definitely agree with everything you just said. You know. We're going to have to use technology, and we're seeing that in hospitality and in retail, to drive those costs down so that they can absorb these labor costs, but they're definitely going to be, you know, continuing to go up yeah, in innovation. the future. Innovation is Absolutely. Key. And you see it in retail a lot. Um, most recently, the Target by my house uh, put in self-service kiosks. Um, Walmart's been doing it for years. Other major retailers have been doing it for years. But you see, um, you see aisles and aisles and aisles of vacant uh, checkout lines, and just the uh, even consumers gravitating towards the self checkout model. I mean, those are you know sometimes 15 terminals worth of people that you don't have to pay uh, 
you don't have to absorb that overhead. You don't have to worry about them not showing up to work. You don't have to show up. You don't have to worry about them, you know, getting mad at a customer and cussing them out and having to cough a customer's meal or a customer's whatever. Um, and you know, in the in the hospitality space, we're seeing it too. In the re in the hospitality space, we're seeing um, we're seeing restaurants turn to technology, like Christy mentioned, deploying kiosks, deploying order at the table. Uh, arming their servers with iPads to help increase table turns just to offset some of those increased costs. And, uh, you know, we say the future of labor costs were made certain, but um, I'll tell you what, the, the costs across the board are just going up in general. You know, fuel costs are up, uh, electric bills are up, all of the costs associated with doing business, just the cost of doing business is on the rise. And so we've seen a number of businesses turn to technology to help offset those rising costs. Yep, I'm with you there. So the other disruption for 2016 actually started in October of 15, and that is the, the altered payment models in the United States of America with EMV. I'm not going to belabor this one. It, it just, I, I want to, I, you know, next time we do this, we'll do a poll, but I'd be curious to, of all these people that are listening in here and watching today, all the percentages of that could say, you know what, yeah, this took up one quarter of my time or two quarters of 2016 or be or they're still, still dealing with it. One of the things I do want to throw in really quick on this slide is that with traditional point of sale, the leading players, the, the uh, oracles, the NCRs, the posi touches, the digital dining, the squirrels, all of the traditional POS, Technology has finally advanced and caught up. EMV caught a lot of people flat-footed, and it was not your point-of-sale vendors. It, the technology and the, and the infrastructure went way beyond them. And so now the system is starting to manage this pipeline of need, if you will. And one of the misnomers is that now that I've got a, possibly a third-party EMV device that's sending point-to-point -point encryption, and tokenized data that I'm perfectly safe. And I'll tell you, you're a lot safer than you were if you go to this device that's point to point, but the reality is that everything is going through your firewall, so that's where security starts. So let's go ahead. I'm, you want to jump in there, Rock? Yeah, I was just going to, I was just going to add something here real quick, Gary. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, EMV was a big, big blow, I would say, to the restaurant space. Because if anyone's used EMV in the last, you know, six months or, or whatever the timeline might be, you know that those EMV transactions take longer. They're more cumbersome. Uh, you may you may not even have the capability of taking EMV, and that could be because of your uh, your card processor. It could be because of um, the costs associated. It could be because uh, it's just not in your your business model. Um, so it's opening you up to vulnerability for chargeback. We're seeing we're seeing a bunch of chargebacks hitting the restaurant space. But what in, what we did see in 2016 was that the need for EMV was pushing restaurant operators to move to seek out alternative payment forms like NFC, like you know loading up a Starbucks card or your Chick Fil A one app with 25 bucks and just scanning a QR code. Uh, at the register, instead of having to take a payment, they were depending on other forms of payment. That was a huge disruptor. There was uh, hardware costs associated with it. There were there were questions that we're still getting that we still don't have answers to. Um, and it, it just it was a like Gary said, it was a big disruption uh, in the space, and it's going to impact what happens in 2017. I will go go ahead and go to the next slide. But one last thing on the EMV, I will say is and it's not on our prediction list, but you guys will all see those transactions speeding up. The technologists have identified what was slowing down the process. One of them was a paradigm shift in which a consumer was trained to swipe something, and now you want them to stick it in. So the consumer is dipping, forgive me, that's the appropriate terminology, dipping instead of swiping, and that created challenges unto itself. You'll see not only the technology, but the consumer all merge together and speed up an EMV transaction. So 2017, whew. 
where do we start? This uh, 2017 is going to go to our top five predictions are tied to security, mobility, and the same stuff that you guys have been hearing for the last couple of years, and that is leveraging data. And so go ahead and advance to the next slide. The number one threat that, excuse me, prediction number one is threats will continue to escalate. And this is not gloom and doom, uh, the sky, a chicken little saying the sky is falling. This is our reality, and, and Christy's going to touch on something here just in a moment when I pitch it over. But the slide that said Bloomberg saw an increase in breaches in 2016, Christy and I were going through this last night together, and we, you know, sadly, we were, you know, a little bit guffawing because it goes up every year. The bad guys are working overtime. You've got organized crime units, organized crime distribution, organized crime resources in Eastern Europe, in China, in Iran, in a number of countries. So, Christy, you want to throw something in before I go up, keep going on escalation of threats? I absolutely agree. 2017 is going to be another record year. Unfortunately, it's not what we want to see in security. We'd like to see the breaches go down, but we're going to continue to see them increase. Um, it's also not going to just be the big guys. Everyone's focusing on these big targets. You know, the governments are always going to be a target, and all their subsidiaries are going to be targets. But the small guys are the ones who are going to take the hits. Um, the security, if it's not in place currently, it needs to. You've got to have a firewall as your front line of defense, um, either in the cloud or in your space. It's got to be there. And they're going to take the biggest hits because they're responsible now. With the new PCI compliance rules, they're responsible for any fraudulent charges, and so they're going to be paying for them. Ryan, what are you seeing on the POS side? Um, yeah, thanks for that, Christy. Yeah, you know what? We're seeing an increase, too, um, on our side of just a constant barrage of attacks and threats and, and ultimately just a, um, kind of an unsafe environment. And that that's really where the partnership between CBS and, and TechMart really comes into play. We, we trust, <clears throat> we, we value our customers, you know, more than anything. And we, their safety and their security is paramount to us for our success. So we lean on companies like Techmark that are experts in cybersecurity to help make sure that they're fully tightened up and fully, you know, fully secure. That way, we, that way it, makes, it makes our job a little bit easier. But um, I do want to take a step back and, and talk about the EMV uh, change, that EMV trend that we saw in 2016. That has opened up the largest opportunity for threat. And I'll call it threat any opportunity to do wrong to a business or a brand. The threat that we saw with EMV were, was the, that liability shift, essentially what happens for those of us that don't know. The liability shifted from uh, the consumer or the, or the credit card to the business. So what we're seeing, some of our biggest clients are turning in uh, $100,000, $200,000 a month at times in chargebacks. Um, and that's if they don't have an EMV solution. Those, uh, those clients of ours are obviously making the switch to EMV, but $200,000 a month, that's $200,000 of people that you're paying, food you're serving, drinks you're pouring that you're not getting paid for. That that can amass to millions of dollars a year. That and that that to me is a is a huge threat. So um, CBS, we're we're super proud of the fact that our uh, cloud-based point of sale system um, it, it's actually EMV certified with four of the largest payment processors. So we're EMV ready. We're ready to mitigate that risk today. Um, and, and those are our large players, but our small players um, are now starting to be put in the crosshairs of some of these threats. As the larger, uh, as the larger restaurants and the larger clients, as they're becoming more protected, as their IT team gets dialed in, or they turn to a service like Techmark, our our smaller, um, you know, our smaller clients that might not have the IT infrastructure, might not have EMV in their business plan, 
or <clears throat> might not be currently working with a cybersecurity team like Techmark, that we're finding that they are vulnerable for not only um, not only chargebacks and, and chargebacks for a small chain or a small business is it could it could mean you know the difference between a highly profitable year and a year that you guys might not be able to open up again. Um, but just the threat of breaches, just the threat of data breaches um, is, is trickling down. Like I said, as the bigger players are becoming more secure, a little bit more savvy, that just the, the bad guys move down the food chain. Um, you know, we, uh, we're, I, think, I think, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to be talking about security coming up here, so I'm going to hand it back to you. Number two, security needs, needs to become a priority. I don't, this is not gloom and doom. This really is just processes and procedures that create a consistent pattern of not only surveillance and monitoring, but also those practices that make you secure. And I'll tell you what, as I've learned more and more about our technology and the strength and capability of the firewalls going into the future, meaning that you got the old PZ 105s and you've got the um, you've got the stuff that's coming down the pike. And technology is advancing so rapidly that that all of this can be prevented at the firewall. So with that, Christy, you want to add anything that security needs to become a priority? Absolutely. Um, so the firewall is key. You know, the big thing is security cannot be um, a one-and-done solution. It has to be an everyday occurrence going forward. You know, you need to ha be monitored daily. Using that firewall is a big piece of it. Um, but when you have third parties that can get into your system, maybe they're controlling your heating and your air conditioning, maybe they're controlling your lights, those parties also need to be compliant. That's all part of PCI compliance, making sure that your third parties are compliant, that you're compliant, everything's locked down, you know, the, not just the front door, the back door, but the windows too. Um, so all that's extremely important. Ryan, um, what are you guys doing over at CBS to lock down your systems? Um, <clears throat> thanks, Christy. Yeah, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, fragmented app-based world that we live in today, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, security, it, you know, you're putting information out there every single day, every single minute of the day that you may or may not be aware of. Businesses are no different. Um, there's just a ton of holes or chinks in the armor, if you will, that could, um, could be exposed to the bad guys, and that's when, that's when that security component really comes into play. Um, CBS has uh, how we've addressed the security issue. So, so the point of sale uh, world that we play in, we when we designed our cloud-based point of sale North Star order entry, we built it with security first. We that was the first thing we we considered. So uh, integrated into the point of sale is a, a, a encrypted card swipe. So the card data is encrypted at the swipe. It's tokenized with point-to-point -point encryption. So. That means as soon as you swipe your credit card, none of that cardholder data hits the point of sale system. It actually turns into a bunch of uh, heart stars, horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons. It gets sent to a decryption service. They say, yep, this person, this is good, A-OK. -okay. Send, um, send it back to your store, and that's when it says, yes, approved, or, or whatever. And that happens within, you know, hundredths of a second. Um, <clears throat> In terms of um, in terms of uh, the point of sale system, that that is that is ultimately the safest um, component that we could uh, that we could really you know muster up for our clients. So uh, that's that's really that's really where we're that where we're playing um, when it comes to security. Do you want to answer this question because I can tie that in too? Um, yeah. So. Uh, can take that one if you read it, Jimmy. Yeah, so um, real quick, guys, we had a question come in, uh, and um, typically we'll save these for the end, but uh, this one's pretty relevant. Yeah, so we had a, we had a guest, um, or we had an attendee ask, seen some locations where EMV transactions go pretty quickly, some go slower. Uh, what determines the speed of an EMV transaction? A couple, couple things that, that I've learned. One is bandwidth. 
which is kind of the most obvious, how much, how much of a pipeline do I have to transmit data, and who am I sharing it with, and how many people am I sharing it with? That'll have an effect on, on data speed. The other thing with EMV is, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, is the swipe going to dip. One of the things that I read, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to dig up this article now, but one of the things that I read, Ken, was that, that the way the code was written tied to the process by which the consumer does their credit card, the super smart code writers have found that they added too many steps, and if they make some minor adjustments, that that will speed up the process. The last thing I'll say is, is always the hardware. I think that at some places you're going to see um, speed where connectivity is better. It can be geographically located, surprisingly, we still have geographic dead spots or less than perfect coverage, um, and that working in working in combination with a, a slower device is going to slow everything down. So that was all opinion. Having said that, it's based on stuff that I've read. So thank you. Number three, internet's taken over. You know, from a restaurant space, because I come from from this part of the pack of the woods, is. Restaurateurs and chains specifically need to keep in action, and so we see managers armed with tablets and or using their cell phones and wireless connectivity to stay on the sales floor, whether it's quick service, fast, casual, or table service. We see, um, we see cloud-based point of sale. We see cloud-based HR and above store reporting capabilities. This, the cloud has created a whole new world, and that world is access to data whenever you want it. And what is it was, and this is, ties into order entry real quick. Was the one of the sayings for the software was access everywhere. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, order, order, order everywhere. Manage any. There you go. And so back to the internet. You know what? Bandwidth speeds are getting faster. People are able to take more to the internet. The cloud capabilities and infrastructures are getting stronger. Christy, you want to add anything to that? Well, absolutely. You know, those little cell phones and iPads go everywhere, and they're they're hugely on demand. Um, you know, you need to have the firewall in place, so it's got some content filtering on it, that it's got proper configurations. But, you know, I have a seven-year-old. We don't go out for dinner without an iPad or a cell phone because when we're trying to have a conversation and she's bored, you know, it's Netflix all the time. So, you know, customers are demanding that they have dependable, consistent, and quality connections. And, you know, restauranteurs have to have that available. Um, it's the future. It's not going to go away, and it's going to be demanded more and more everywhere. Yep, Brian. Brian, your North Star um, solution handles a lot of yeah. Um, this is this is this couldn't be more relevant to um, to what we've got going on at Custom Business Solutions, just across the board, really. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, we're living in an app-based world. There's an app to run just about every aspect of my life. Um, everything's connected. Uh, so, so what that means is all of all of uh, all the data and, and managing managing your store has actually never been easier. So, <clears throat> let's take Northstar for example. Northstar is a cloud-based uh, point of sale system. It was built it was built for multiple no, multiple units, um, which is which is uh, great. Using the internet, you go onto a, a secure portal. You can manage your pricing for all your stores, one of your stores, three of your stores, your stores in Georgia, but not your stores in South Carolina. Um, you can manage everything from, from the Internet. You can manage it from, uh, you know, Christy, if you were running a chain of restaurants, you could grab your iPad from, uh, you know, you could, you could break up Frozen, or um, I think Gary made an Aladdin reference earlier um, with A Whole New World, but, you know, you could, you could interrupt that movie, make a pricing change real quick, hand it right back to them, and uh, you know, dinner dinner goes on as as intended. Um, so really, uh, you know, everything is everything in general is moving to the cloud. Uh, you know, at NRA, which is in May, um, Custom Business Solutions will be attending uh, NRA in Chicago. Last year, we saw everything was just smart. I mean, it was it was anything you could think of was smart. Smart refrigerators, smart ovens. 
smart yeah. cooktop, smart thermometer, smart, you know, like it's, you know, yeah. It, so it everything was, was everything was smart, remote. and it and it um, and it all ties together, and it and it's all dependent on the internet. I just can't, I just can't see it going any other way than um, this having a secure, uh, having a secure and solid internet uh, source in your business is just going to be paramount. So yeah, go ahead, and that takes us right into the next slide because that is the building blocks. Wi-Fi is the building blocks of business in the future. If you look at the two main devices that control you or save you from the bad guy, it is through your firewall and or your wireless network. And so, Christy, add to what I'm saying here about the building blocks of business. Well, absolutely. For us, we do a managed Wi-Fi business along with our managed PCI. Um, what our companies are and companies like us are able to do is um, we're able to offer an enterprise solution for a fraction of the cost. And that's really important. We partner with Aerohive and, and use their access points. We partner with Dell to use their firewalls. And we've worked with other companies, too, that, that we're able to manage. Um, it's all required, no matter what you're doing, to have good Wi-Fi. Not If it's just to run your business, maybe it's just to run your POS, you're not offering guests. But if you are offering guests, we can use those same appliances instead of, you know, in the past you had to, you know, multiple appliances to run different networks. We can do it all in the same appliances now. Let's keep your network all together. We just configure it and segment it correctly. Um, so those are the key things. You've got to have quality service and um, proper security to make sure that you've got those building blocks in place, but you can run your business securely and safely and give a great experience to your customers using Wi-Fi. Right on. Ryan? Yeah, I would call this one an extension of prediction number three. Mm -hmm. um, all those smart devices that I just mentioned, most all of them need Wi-Fi. Um, you know, most all of them are probably app-based or cloud-based some, in some fashion. Now, being cloud-based doesn't mean you can't run off of an Ethernet cable, but what, what including that Wi-Fi does, it, it actually knocks out a couple of these predictions all in one fell swoop. So, for example, uh, you know, the, um, the guest the guest experience, the, uh, you know, Christy's example of, uh, you know, the iPad watching Netflix, um, that that is dependent on Wi-Fi. That same Wi-Fi signal can be used to run the rest of your business as well. Like I said, depend or like Christy said, depending on uh, your partner, you know, TechMark does a really great job, and we trust them um, with our our most valuable clients. Um, you know they they do they do Wi-Fi segmentation that that is just pretty much bulletproof. Um, but but the beauty of Wi-Fi and the beauty of building a business um, or or advancing your business and modernizing your business with Wi-Fi um, it just opens up options. Um, you know with North Star, uh, I've, I've been talking a lot about it, I, but you know we we're pretty proud of it, but. The, the Wi-Fi enables you to take orders literally anywhere in your restaurant. You can hand uh, you can hand a server an iPad Mini or an iPad and go to the table and take orders, uh, and you can send orders directly to the kitchen from the table side. Uh, our our other point of sale system, um, PosiTouch, that we that we are the uh, leading reseller for, um, it depends on that Wi-Fi signal to um, to talk back into that network, uh, and we have one of our largest clients is doing a, a nationwide rollout of handheld. And so, with that, with that rollout, uh, you know, having a really tight, really locked down Wi-Fi network is is paramount. Um, you know, the other the other thing that you could uh, deploy with the Wi-Fi with Northstar specifically, putting a kiosk out in your lobby so that people could create uh, pre-orders. Or giving guests the opportunity to hit um, <clears throat> hit your mobile website and order from your website through your Wi-Fi. Um, all of that is sent to the kitchen immediately. And uh, the beauty of it is you could use that same Wi-Fi to manage all of those menu items and all the pricing, all that good stuff. So um, that's really it. Really is the foundation for uh, the business of tomorrow. We'll call it. Okay. Thank you. And then our last one, number five, data has been never been more valuable. Um, we, over the last six years that I've been going to NRF here this past, in here in January, a couple weeks ago, 
data has been paramount. We see the credit card companies leveraging and selling data. That's been going on for years. But now, now all these software companies are populating retail and hospitality and restaurants. And they're taking this data and helping people drive more revenue. So, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, um, thanks, Gary. So, the data, you know, we play, and especially being in a in the marketing sales hybrid world here, um, I'm a data I'm a data hound. I love, I I can't get enough of it. Yep. And fortunately for me, there is plenty of data that's already coming into the business, our business, your business. That all it all it you really have to do is dice and slice it in order to actually make some sense of it and, and you can make actionable business decisions. Um, but you know, some of the points that this data is coming from, you know, your Wi-Fi is sending data. You know, that Arrowhide unit that Christy was talking about before. There's there's uh, data that comes from your Wi-Fi units. The point of sale systems have Wi-Fi. Loyalty programs have uh, or have uh, a lot of data and um, loyalty programs are just chock full of data. That's why we built our own into Northstar. Um, but these loyalty programs and these, these data points help offset those rising costs of labor, <clears throat> gas, electricity, that I mentioned earlier, so that you can keep running your business. Maybe you don't have to, uh, you know, maybe you don't have to cut staff, but maybe with a successful loyalty program, you can increase uh, customer retention, increase, um, you know, multi-time users, multi-users in back into the door to increase that revenue enough to offset that cost. Uh, the data is there, it's, it's super valuable, it's just about how you slice and dice it, like I said. So um, the other thing that data is used for, especially coming from the marketing guy, is creating that word of mouth marketing. If you look at some of the most successful up and coming brands um, that, that are out there today, people making news all the time, um, they have a huge groundswell following, and it didn't happen by accident. They, the, these brands used this data to create fans, but then they then they created then they used the data to create raving fans and super fans, and and now you're seeing, uh, you know, their franchises are, are popping off. They're just showing up everywhere. That it, it's all in that data. So Christy, how can how can TechMark uh, you know, what can our listeners learn from TechMark about data and, and its value? So for us, using back to using that Wi-Fi that we've already talked about, you know, those cell phones that everyone's carrying, everyone's using in your stores, they're pinging all the time. Where you're at in a store, where you're doing, um, what you're doing, how long you're in a store in a certain location, if you walked past a store. We have partnerships that we have multiple solutions to help our customers take all that data, not only your sales data, but how many customers are in your store, where they were at in your store, and put it together with your sales to let you know how you can staff better, how you can drive customers better, maybe signage that is to make it work better for you to bring customers back. We have other partners that we can use, um, that we use email and texting apps to those phones that are in your locations by collecting that data while they're there they can drive those customers back in. Maybe you have a sell. Maybe you have an event coming that you want them to come back to. We, they can also ping right back into your loyalty program um, with some of our partners. So once a customer logs into that Wi-Fi, connects to your Wi-Fi, they're automatically driven to your loyalty site. So a lot of this uh, of our solutions with our partners help you use that data to drive business and to help you grow your business so you can offset your your labor costs so that you can offset your expenses and you can continue to grow your business. Perfect. Hey, Christy, real quick question for you. And I just, this question uh, came from uh, uh, one of our attendees, but it's a really great question. I think it, I think it would be of value. Um, do you guys, there's, there's regulations and, and laws governing, um, you know, data collection uh, that vary. Can you assist brands with navigating the data collection laws in the different states and regions and countries, et cetera? Absolutely. With our partnerships that we have, everyone um, follows all the rules and laws to um, incorporated with us. And right off the top of my head, I can't think of the regulations that they are, but there's a founding group. Um, all of our partners and, and ourselves, we follow all those regulations to make sure that we're not 
selling individual data. We are selling, we're not selling data at all. We're collecting data and using that information to help our business partners drive their business. Um, the actual clients are agreeing when we put out these, this, when they log into Wi-Fi, they're agreeing to let us use this data um, and let us contact them. So we definitely follow all the rules and all the regulations. Um, and we make sure that all of our partners do too, so that not only are we collecting data safely and securely, um, but we're not utilizing it in a bad way. And just to, add, just to answer the other part of the question, yes, we do work with customers to help them with data storage, appropriate data storage. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. So we've gotten to that time in the, in the presentation. Folks, I apologize because I know we ran almost 45 minutes. Um, we're a little rusty in our presentation will promise to tighten our tighten our reduce our words. <laughs> it's just a great topic. We just couldn't help ourselves. Totally. Oh, here's a here's a question. Got questions coming in. What are the costs associated with building a smart Wi-Fi infrastructure? Um, I, I'll take that. I, a couple things. It, one is to, to throw you a number. Depending on square footage, depending on coverage, it could be hundreds. It could be thousands. It, it also depends on the equipment that you're selecting. Quick, uh, Christy has, had mentioned Aerohive. We work with a number of different Wi-Fi providers, all of the main brands. And so uh, each product is usually tied in and in, in through a consultative um, process with Techmark. We identify the appropriate product and then provide the solution. So. I know that was vague, but it's the tools that you're bringing to, to put stuff together that affects the price and the quality of the tool. I'll add on to that, that the one piece that we do that is unique about our Wi-Fi solution is that we do the installation of the product, we do the monitoring of the product, we take care of it all. So it's a one-stop solution for it, so you don't have to have multiple vendors and installers involved. Okay, I've got another quick question here. How does the POS work in the cloud? You, is that one for me here? Yep. Yes, yeah. Yes, I, would, sure. I would assume so. <laughs> um, so the the cloud. Uh, so essentially, the way the way that the North Star system works uh, currently, it's on um, an iPad. Uh, currently, it's Apple based. Uh, if you guys are joining us at Mertech, we'll have some uh, exciting news to um, share with you. We may have. Some new toys to play with uh, coming from our friends at Microsoft. I'm not making any announcements right now, um, but if you're going to Mertech, be sure to track us down. Um, essentially, you go to the App Store currently. Go to the App Store, download the app. Uh, you then log on uh, on your desktop PC, um, your smartphone, wherever. Um, you log into a portal online, and you you manage. Uh, your whole restaurant through one online portal. You go and you connect that iPad to a store that's managed online, and you have a uh, point of sale system exactly. right there in your hand. And that easy. The tablets are talking to a uh, little device in the office, porting that data up to the cloud, and so transactionally, everything's happening in real time. Yep. So, one last question before we let you guys go: What are the biggest threats facing the industry today? Uh, before I pitch this over to Christy, from my standpoint, it goes back to the firewalls. Um, e even if you have old firewalls, they've got greater capability than you think they do to either do web fil content filtering and or lock out the bad guys. We saw a spike in 2016 of ransomware, which was, it, it comes and it goes. This stuff, it, it goes dormant for a little bit and then someone sparks up a new um, piece of code that, that hits the universe and, and so ransomware is something that became very top of mind uh, through the end of 2016. Christy, what do you say about industry threats? Absolutely. I think um, besides having that firewall in place, you've got to make sure that you're getting your mm -hmm. patches updated. Um, we've seen that going forward with customers who've come to us and said, hey, we had a breach before there are customers. How do we stop this from happening again. We give them our solution, but the first thing we'll find is that, that the patches weren't up to date, so they weren't keeping their systems up to date. They didn't have the proper firewall. It wasn't um, something that was compliant at the time. 
So it's very it's key that you have not only your firewall be compliant, that all your payment systems are compliant, that your patches are up to date. Um, when you, we find those things are all those steps are being done, we have a very small scope for breaches to happen. Nice. Thank you. And I think um, one of our one of our attendees actually, I want to say thank you. He he provided a question, quote unquote, is actually an answer to the question. Okay. Ignorance is the biggest threat. <laughs> I think I think I love True. that answer so much. I gotta tell you what, uh, that is awesome. No, that's you know, awesome. No past problem. No need for future action. That I would I can't agree with that more. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, <laughs> It is something that you have to remain mindful of, and it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. And so uh, keeping that in mind, um, I, I love it. So, Gary, I'm going to hand it back to you. Cool. Next steps. You know what? Keep going to the next slide. You know what? Reach out to us. This, this is great. I love this interaction, and thank you for the last comment because I needed some humor at the end of this. It's so true because we, you know, we belabor these subjects over and over again, and you Folks choose to not listen, but you know what? In Ryan Williams, you've got him and a team of folks here in Irvine that can help you with new point of sale, old point of sale, and anything restaurant technology related, quite honestly. Yep. With Christy, uh, she's here in the middle of the country for you folks in the central time zone. Um, Christy is like a big sister. She helps you to not get in trouble when you may be doing things wrong, and she helps you and explains the necessary steps to go forward. And then lastly, myself, forgive me for my many words today. We'll start to trim down these presentations, so please don't hesitate to either call or email us with any questions you have. Thank you all again for hanging in there with us, and we really appreciate you. And thank you for all our friends that have been coming back for years and years. You know who you are. Have a great day. See you guys.